different modeling centers have chosen various ways of running ensembles based on computational limitations, either the cost of processing or limits to the speed and size of the supercomputer system, different physics schemes, parameterizations, and so on. As of March 2024, the ECMWF runs a 50-member ensemble, the Canadian Meteorological Center a 20-member, and the GEFS at 30 members. For the shorter range, the HRF combines only five high-resolution deterministic models, but implements time-lagged members to increase the total number of ensemble members to 10. Worn on Forecast runs 18 members at 3-kilometer grid spacing. The NBM ingests 41 different models from a combined eight communities worldwide. So, as discussed in the last section about mixing models with varying scales of resolvability, we're now also incorporating model runs with different valid forecast time ranges and ending times. Multiple studies have shown that using a multi-model ensemble improves probabilistic forecast skill and reliability. This is why the National Blend of Models incorporates the long-range global ensembles from the ECMWF, Canadian, and GEFS to create the Grand Ensemble for the extended range. These are three out of the top four scoring models in verification when it comes to global models as of mid-2024. Another reason was that the data from these were already available on the NOAA supercomputing systems as the NBM was being developed. Other ensembles are added as they become available in the shorter time ranges, such as the Australian Axis model and the Navy Global Ensemble. Why did the NBM want to capture as many models and outputs as possible for processing? The more samples you have for statistical processing, in this case the number of ensembles and model runs, the better. The PDFs and CDFs for meteorological parameters will have more data to be built out from and likely capture the full probabilistic space than if it had fewer members. The flip side is that the more ensemble members you have, the amount of processing power needed to do the statistical calculations increases. Let's start off with the sample 10-member ensemble and the resulting PDF. You can see the PDF has a mean of 77.24 degrees and a fairly large standard deviation of values. Now, let's look at what happens if we get a larger sample size of 100 members for the same day and time. The spread is larger in the data and captures even more potential data points for this day and time. This provides a better representation of uncertainty and the potential to capture extreme events. You can see the differences in the mean temperature, which has slightly shifted cooler in the 100-member ensemble compared to the 10-member. The larger ensemble will reduce the influence of outliers, leading to more stable statistical measures, potentially reduced bias as more members or simulations help average out errors, and should result in a better estimate of the true mean temperature and its uncertainty. It will also yield better probabilistic information because it hopefully captures a larger probabilistic space. Think about it. You have fewer ensemble members for the long-range forecast beyond 84 hours. So the likelihood of missing what the forecast will be in the extended range is higher because there are fewer opportunities for the ensemble members to capture possible outcomes for the forecast closest to what reality could be. Changing the number of members in an ensemble or blend can significantly impact predictability and the statistical output for various tools and visualizations. Again, problems can ensue and the possibility that different numbers of ensemble members have been combined will need to be evaluated if blend output is significantly different from previous runs.